28 years after the death of Himmel the Hero, at the Grand's channel, this guy looks like old Himmel. Side quest! <laughs> Clean up side quest. At least we're not dealing with the uh, damn what was it in Avatar. Oil, factory oil, factory sewage. Well, I got what I wanted. Goodbye. <laughs> Good luck with your boat problem. Good luck with your shipwrecks. That's nice of her. I feel like she needed the last episode to get the stakes. Like, I feel like she needed the last episode to get the stakes. I feel like she I think it's the same thing. I think that's been long established. It's the same thing. But it seems to be a central question in the show that keeps coming up. Like, is it for him or is it for her? Etc. So they've been here a while. What else is new? This is different. Like, they're not... I know I'm talking about traveling a lot in the show. But they're not, like, backpacking or what have you. They are living in these places. They are setting down roots, at least, for a solid amount of time. Side note, I wondered, like, what is the criteria for saying you've lived somewhere? Is it a length of time? Is it having an apartment? Is it having legal status? They're gonna really know the world. Like, they're gonna know these places. What do they call it? Central lands? That is a way to sleep. It's really not. What is it with like, oh man, that feeling when you go to a girl's house and she's like, I'm sorry for the mess. And there's like a book <laughs> or a cup in the sink. And you have that immediate thought, guess you're never coming to my place. <laughs> it's just literally like, it, it would take you five seconds. It's like 10 books on the floor. You could pick up the books in five seconds. She's like me for real. I think morning should be illegal. Mind your business, damn. <laughs> Everyone's so nosy all the time. Do, I wonder if they have elements. Friend continues to be mommy. Yes, precisely. Which was the last one out. They, they do really seem like a super tolerant, amazing group of people. Oh no. Yeah, that the rage was just overflowing in that scene. How many shipwrecks are there? Okay, there's a story there. That's a shame because the, the two sunrises I've seen in my life were pretty good. <laughs> I mean, they were alright. I don't know if. It was worth it. They were not bad. I sympathize greatly with Free Ren in this problem because the world was just not designed with us in mind. It's tricky for me, and I'm sure this is not only me, though I don't know if I've ever heard anyone say this, where like mornings are kind of rough and then going through the day is a process of like wrangling my mind and emotions to the point where at the end of the day or as the day gets further and further along, I'm getting sharper and sharper and feeling better and better, which usually ends up peaking at night. And so it's tough to go to sleep because those are the most exciting activities enjoyable, fruitful moments of my internal experience. And then there's also the knowledge that going to sleep ends that and sort of starts that process all over again. I can't say for sure and I'm wary to trauma hunt, but like I sometimes wonder if part of my aversion to going to sleep and waking up early is that for I'd say like four or five years as a kid, school was the most hellish part of my life then and at any point since then and waking up meant school. Oh, hello. I got the magical seaweed. Beach cleaning and training. All Might would be proud. It turned pink.
I feel like this is maybe a second chance. I feel like maybe she missed it the first time and regrets it. I bet the other three went. Have a little faith? <laughs> Damn. That's so- I literally- I literally just said this to a friend of mine. I said the secret to never being late in the morning is not sleeping. It's probably just hung over. <laughs> yes, <laughs> consistent character so far in Free Rin. They wanted to share it with her. It was sort of missing the point. It wasn't really about the sunrise. Once you're out of bed, you're safe. Once you're out of bed and dressed, you're safe. That's 95% of the battle. <laughs> I was biting my tongue. I mean, it can be great. Don't get me wrong. I think maybe she didn't understand Himmel. There it is. You got it. Episode 4, where the, the land where souls rest. Viren's character is hitting a little bit too close to home for me in some unexpected ways. Can't think of any direct examples, but because I'm feeling this way, I guarantee you at some point in my life, I said, it's just XYZ. Why do I need to go? Not realizing it wasn't just XYZ. Also, in my experience, I rarely regret going to things and often regret not going, assuming the alternative is doing nothing or sleeping or what have you. Maybe that's what launched him on the journey. He's a priest, right? Are we having this debate? What is it, Pascal's wager? Here's an odd take on the heaven thing. Just one way to think about it. A lot of religious beliefs end up being taken very literally when perhaps the original meaning was more metaphorical, more literary. I'm not saying this is the right answer. It's just a way to think about it. If you treat existence itself as a sort of deity and you see it having a will, that will being like just the, the raw rules and structure of the universe and, and the life within it and that there, there sort of does seem to be kind of like an objective spectrum of desirable, undesirable, if even at its most basic, just like survival, right? That we even have a concept of like pleasure and pain, for example, means it isn't just an empty vacuum. There are barometers of a certain kind, even if they're very material, that is backed by like the entire structure and rules of the universe. In that light, you can maybe evaluate human life in terms of where they are in the spectrum of facilitating this sort of like growth, development, potential, survival in its highest, longest term meaning, not just, you know, my immediate survival right now at all costs, in sync with the general flow of existence. And that the reward for that would be you are forever a an influence and a part of all good things to come forever through all of time, or at least through all of human existence. One question I've asked is like, if you did see the universe and its rules as a god, and you do see yourself as connected to the universe and not, you know, just sort of operating here in a vacuum independent of all existence, what higher mission would there be than to be like an agent of that? And in that light, wouldn't your greatest reward being a key central godlike figure in that pursuit as an internal piece of that whole? <laughs> There would be something eternal life about that, right? He's still kicking. So casual. It was sort of forced on her. なんで知っているの文通をしていたからな顔に似合わず律儀だねお前がそっけなさすぎるんだ知っておりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおりおり
お前なら知っているはずだ生草坊詰めそこまで調べていたのか分かったまずは大きな He also has scammed us once with promises of knowledge 時間なんていくらでもあるんですまあね For getting upset in the back. I think, you know, what would help Fern a lot is like knowing what the end point is. There's something to that psychologically. Given two situations where you're waiting the same amount of time, knowing exactly how long you have to wait versus having no idea how long you're going to have to wait makes something go from tolerable to insufferable. So, for example, if you're waiting for the train and there's no indicator of when the train's coming, it's hell. I've had the same thought actually about long distance relationships because long distance relationships, you know, generally speaking, do not go well. A lot of them are doomed. But a lot of the, the pain of them can be circumvented by knowing the exact date in which it's no longer going to be long distance. If you have a very clear count, Countdown. Like on March 3rd, 2025, we will be living in the same place, and here are the steps we're taking to get there. That is the one thing you can do to give your long distance relationship a fighting chance. If it's just like, yeah, we're long distance until question mark, good luck. Yes, she's in, in the process of changing. It's more than that. Oh, yeah, we got ourselves a wood montage. Woods montage. It's been a while. We love nature. Oh, he likes sleeping too. I guess she learned how to fly off screen. Why do they walk? Maybe it's a gift to her. But how? Oh no, here we go. Uh, this is reeks, reeks of danger and bad news. Oh, that was Yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear that's not going to be what it is, though. The answer is not bringing him back to life from the dead. Although, who knows? Oh, she has like direct history to this tree? That is a very specific prophecy. How the hell did you know all that? Oh, Flam was her teacher. That's how she knows so much about her. She's annihilated that Deku tree. I was here when she planted it. Damn, she got lineage. And we're only, we're not even removed. We're not even one removed. We're just direct link. How the, again, how does she know all that? She very directly explained the situation. Oh, speaking of heaven. Oh, yeah, Ariola. Oh, Except she locked it in a tree. There's more to it. So many different individual threads come together in these episodes. Looks like something straight out of Demon Souls. Or Demon's Souls. Dark Souls. Admittedly, this is like a grander stakes quest than like collecting tea. Right. A lot of that's probably fear. Fear of what she will uncover. Why do they call it end? I don't think I'd feel awkward around this guy at all. He seems so chill. She's searching for a lot more than magic. Not at all. That might be how it started, but that's not where we are now. Yeah, 
I think part of it is that Fern is helping her understand herself because she sees herself in Fern. So she gets to be like an objective observer of herself in a sense. There's pros and cons. Dying, I guess, also a con. Traveling alone is awesome. Totally free. You make your own schedule. You do exactly what you want to do. Avoid exactly what you want to avoid. The real benefit for me is that traveling alone forces me to meet new people in the place I'm traveling. When you travel in a group or with your friends, it's a lot easier to lean on that as a crutch, like you're just together, right? But if you're alone and you're social like me and you drown if you spend five minutes by yourself in solitude, you end up meeting really amazing people. Which, by the way, random thought, that's one reason if you like going to bars or clubs, you should try going alone. I recently traveled to Malaysia and had an amazing time and ended up in all these interesting situations situations with people we'll never forget and hopefully we'll see again not sure that would have happened if i was traveling with a buddy for example the downside is it does get a little bit lonely at points like you know you go to this amazing place with this amazing view and you take a picture you know and you wish you had something to talk to about it or just to share it with i mean like the sunrise scene at the, at the start of the episode it's not the sunrise right it's the company hi hi Hydra was very, very good. Or maybe it's not a good thing. But like choosing how he projects his emotions and thoughts. Choosing his outward face. She's definitely teaching Fern about responsibilities because she's responsible for their whole life. Now this is where the adventure kind of begins. The, the danger, the stakes, and the goal. Yeah, it's it's kind of both, right? That was already on the agenda anyway. I want to see their party do battle more. Is that all? <laughs> this show is the opposite of My Hero Academia, where we're like eight seasons in and we're still in the first year of high school. If My Hero Academia were free run, their entire high school career would be five seconds of the anime. Their entire lives, perhaps. Well, it seems like in episode four, we hit the main plot. You know, we hit the, the main adventure. Or in video game terms, a story mission as a, opposed to a side quest. Not that I didn't love the side questing too, but I think free run can feel it too, that this is a little bit higher stakes, not just in terms of the danger, but in terms of her emotional, personal stakes and connection. She's been kind of dancing around it. She's already been on this path. She's looking for herself. She's looking for closure on things she didn't quite understand when it was relevant. But this is very directly facing the person, the thing, the issue, head on. And Fern getting dragged along for the ride. 